Hi in five, I'm back again with chapter 13 today. Um, we're getting on with this book, we're nearly halfway through. And um, remember, if you've missed any chapters, you can go back and find them on YouTube, um, because when we finish it, you can do the quiz on it. So it'd be really great if you know everything that happened, and then that can count towards your target. Okay, great stuff. Thanks to what Billy Big Mouth Rumsey said last night, Dad now knows that we know some stuff, but what stuff we don't know, Dad doesn't know. And we don't know how much stuff we actually know. Basically, all the stuff to do with Dad and Pearl is jumbled up and that's where we are right now. At school, I draw a pentagon and add all the relevant names in it, the points. Dad, Pearl, Camille, Naked Man, Spotty Scarf Woman. I try to draw lines across the centre to see who will end up with whom. I've drawn a line between Dad and Pearl and then paired the Naked Man off with Camille, but the lady with the polka dot scarf is on her own. Sitting back, I admire my quite excellent diagram, only for Mr Beagle to wander past me and bellow that it's a fine drawing of a pentagon, but if I hadn't noticed, we're actually talking about poop at the moment. So, we're nearly at the end of the first phase of poop, says Mr Beagle, wandering back to the front of the class and tugging on his tie. He looks over and ignores Dante Moffat, who has his hand up. The next phase is for you to finish your designs and I'll announce the winner. Then we'll plant the garden, and of course the final and most exciting phase is when we invite your parents to come and marvel at their offspring's talent. Oh, fabulous. As if I wasn't feeling rotten enough, Mr Beagle's just reminded me that Pearl won't be coming to the poop display. I glance over at Knuckles, and he looks just as miserable as me. Maybe he's annoyed that his dad can't come too. As I catch his eye, he looks away and pretends to be very busy, picking his nose. Mr Beagle says we've probably noticed that there is a table with items on it that we could add into our garden designs. You may not have considered things like this going in a garden. For example, CDs. They glint in the light, they look amazing, and they keep birds away. Practical and pretty. Please take a look and you may choose something from the table and include it in your design or not. You're the designer here. Everyone gets up to look at the items Mr Beagle's brought in. They include CDs from the 90s. Vintage, as Ibiza Nana would say. Old, as I would say. An old washing machine drum. Mr. Beagle says we could put flowers in it. Use tin cans. Mr. Beagle eats a lot of beans. A used biscuit tin. Mr. Beagle also eats a lot of biscuits. A toy yellow dumper truck. Again, for plants, says Mr. Beagle. An old boot. Knuckles strolls over to the table and picks up the dumper truck. Mimi's saying how she wouldn't touch anything here with the barge pole, which is lucky because there is no barge pole. She rises from her chair and then saunters over to me at the table and mutters in my ear, Nothing here for you, then. I just shrug and she continues. I'm going to win anyway. My mum says I'm great at everything I do because I'm just like her. I'm always top of the class. That's when Knuckles accidentally knocks Mimi with the dumper truck and she squeals that he's a complete idiot. Just like your dad. I read about him in the paper. I see fury erupt in Knuckles' chest. Just as it's about to kick off, I get in between them. Suddenly, Knuckles' knuckles shoot forward and fist me right in the belly. Unfortunately, my belly does not have a sniff of muscle. Fortunately, I have about four folds of flesh that act like a trampoline and his knuckles bounce straight off. Without warning, my own hands fly forward and grab his wrist in a vice-like grip. Next, he twists around as if he's dancing and that's when Mr Beagle starts shouting that poop is not about having a wrestling match and if we don't stop tussling, we'll be in big trouble. What's this all about? snaps Mr Beagle, separating us. I don't know, seethes Knuckles, but he does know. It was because Mimi said Knuckles was an idiot like his dad. How could she say that about someone who's died? I don't like Mimi one little bit. Mr Beagle tells us to get out of his sight and I hurry away as quickly as possible. Back at my desk, I pretend to be very busy finishing my design for poop. Neva, seeing my sad face, strolls past and before she can say a word to me about butterflies, I say the bracelet isn't making anything amazing happen. In fact, it's making things go even worse. Look, I nearly got into a big fight wearing it. Haven't you heard that it's always darkest before the dawn, whispers Neva, before walking back to her desk, humming as she goes. Haven't you heard that butterflies are just butterflies and bracelets don't make amazing things happen, I holler after her. Neva glances back and I can tell she's upset with me. After school, when I switch on my mobile, there's a text from Dad. We need to talk. Dad. Kiss. I text back. Is it about the birds and the bees? Beck. No, it isn't. You're too young to know about the birds and the bees. Okay, if it's not a talk about growing up, then Dad's going to tell us what's going on with him and Pearl and why he didn't sound happy to get a phone call from her on Friday. He must have been spurred on because he knows we saw him at a polka dot, lady's, polka dot scarf lady's bubblegum house. Dad picks us up from the school gates and takes us to the park across the road from our flat. 
When Billy runs off and lunges at a swing, Dad turns to me and says, we need this little chat. I've been meaning to do it for ages. Okay. I inhale, thinking that this is the moment that the world will become clear again, like when you're in a car wash and one minute surrounded by foam and the next you can see better than ever before. I breathe out as Dad reaches into his pocket and removes his mobile phone before rummaging around for a tissue and then blowing his nose. He sets his phone down on the bench and settles beside it. Billy goes up and down, down and up, up and down, down and up on the swing. He'll be seasick, says Dad, grinning. I sit down beside him and Dad takes the breath of a deep sea diver before saying, I wanted to talk to you because we've not had enough fun in this family recently. Sweet baby cheeses. Is that it? Is that what the big talk was about? This is a bigger disappointment than when Abitha Nana said she bought me a tablet and it turned out to be a Scottish tablet, which was like hard fudge. Let's have a flat warming party. How about next Tuesday? That gives us a week to organise it. Is that it? I'm screaming in my head. Nothing about Pearl or Camille or the lady that trotted out of the bubblegum pink house with the polka dot scarf. There's a tiny thread on my school jumper and as I tug it, it begins to unravel. In fact, I'm so annoyed that if I pull any harder, I'm not going to have a jumper left. Dad continues. It's exactly what we all need, so I'll arrange it for next Tuesday at 7.30. I'll invite a few of the fish delivery blokes and you and Billy can invite anyone you like. This is not a chat about what's going on. This has nothing to do with why Pearl isn't with us and why he doesn't want us to make contact with her or for her to contact us. This has nothing to do with Camille. This has nothing to do with how Billy and I feel. This is just like adding a cherry onto a cake that's already stale. Dad furrows his brow when he sees my face is sourer than a super sour sweet. Don't you want a party? I nod and say very carefully that I do want one, but... Billy's just run across the park and fallen in a heap on the floor because clearly he has no awareness of how his feet actually work and has managed to trip himself up. His dad goes to help Billy, his mobile bleeps, and even though I think about calling dad back, I can't resist reading the text first. Hey, I'm only human. Hi Stephen, it's Camille. It was a pleasure to see you yesterday. Feel free to come back at any time. Orla will be here if I'm not around. You can see her. Or if not Orla, try Kimberly. I'll give you a ring at some point anyway busted. Dad was most definitely with Camille yesterday and it sounds like there are loads of others too. This isn't a love pentagon, it's a love dodecahedron. When Dad comes back I pretend I haven't been looking at anything anywhere near his phone. Oh no. In fact all this time I've been staring up into the sky at a seagull flying overhead and praying it hasn't eaten anything dodgy. Dad parks his bum back on the bench and picks up his phone glancing at the message. His ears turn a funny shade of red and he clears his throat <clears throat> before putting the mobile phone back in his pocket. Any messages? I blink innocently. No, replies Dad. I'm Daddy No, mate. It's on the tip of my tongue to say I doubt that very much, only Dad stops me in my tracks by saying, your mother loved a party. Billy's back on the swings now, going up and down, down and up. I'd like to shout at Dad, don't change the subject! But at the same time, I want him to change the subject because we never talk about mum enough. Yeah, she was always at the heart and soul of a good party, Dad sighs. Your mum and I came here before, right to this spot. Did you know that? I shake my head. We lived in the house on Hon in Honeydown Hills, but came here for a little day trip to see a seal. I swallow. Did you see one? Dad smiles and ruffles my hair with his fingers. No, but mum found this old glass water bottle on the beach and said she wanted to do something special. I remember the photo I saw in Dad's bedroom in the flat where Mum was holding a bottle. She wanted to send a message in a bottle. Well, I told her it was pointless doing that because no one ever bothers with those things anymore. Not now we've got emails and we can send phone messages. Dad lowered his eyes until his lashes tickle his cheeks. But your Mum insisted that she wanted to. She said someone out there would guess her message. They might be very far away from her, but it would reach them and maybe they'd get in contact if she gave her address. And did someone get Mum's message? I swallow and blink rapidly. At this moment, I don't care about parties or anything else. What I want most in the world is for someone to have replied to Mum's message in a bottle. Dad keeps his gaze steady, and when I lick my lips, waiting for his reply, I taste the tang of salt. No, Dad admits eventually. She never did get a reply. A few years later, we were looking at photos, and we came across one from that day, and I asked your Mum if she minded that no one had ever replied. Then Mum said someone would. There was still time. Dad sighs and rubs his eyes. But there wasn't time. I swallow again and it's like my stomach's on a helter-skelter whizzing downwards on a straw mat. 
wish mum could come back and give me a hug, I whisper, more to myself than anyone. Oh, son, if she could, she would. I could give you a hug in her place, if that would count. Mum would be happy with that. I nod and take a hug from Dad, and I close my eyes and imagine it is Mum. Even though Dad's about three times her size, and he smells of swish and sweat and pine forests. And I imagine Mum smelling of vanilla cupcakes and flowers. For one pure and perfect second, it almost feels real, and I don't want to let Dad go. If I try really hard, I can imagine Mum's heartbeat. Then Dad pulls away, and just like that, it feels like Mum's gone again. Some tough bits to read in here, aren't there? Some really tough bits. Email us if you've got any questions or want to talk about anything that we're reading on here, okay? Okay, that's chapter 13 over. 14 next, which is... Oh, not too long a chapter, about 10 pages. All right, thanks, guys. See you later. Bye.